Let's expand on creating vector fields and go from having this follow path type vector field to a full vector field with a follow path inside. So we built this setup in the last video. Um, I am in the, so this project file is available on Patreon. So I just have the original project file that I had set up and I'm just gonna dive into basically what we had set up in the last video. So we did this all in the last video. If you're interested in that, check that out. But we're gonna just build upon this just a little bit more and create a vector field around this follow path type vector field that we got going on here. So let's just actually, let's look at this pop net first. So if I press play, you can see that we have our particles just kind of flowing across the path and we want to make it so once they get outside of where this follow path is, we want them to follow along a secondary vector field that gives them some added motion. So let's go ahead and create that. So we'll dive into the volume bob here and we essentially want the same thing that we had down here, except for we want with the, um, the position. So let's just actually, oops, I don't want to do that. Let's just select this node and alt and drag to create a copy. Let's jump back to frame one, two. And in here, we also want a PC filter or a point cloud filter. And with this, we want to keep it on the position. You leave, yeah, so these we changed to curve U in the normals before. So this one we're going to leave on our position. And let's go ahead and just wire this into our output just so you can see what we get here. So we kind of have a similar thing, just uh, they don't really follow the path all that much. Basically, what we're looking to do here is to find where this curve exists. And we want to take that and kind of subtract that out of our vector field because we have this already created down here, how we like it. And to do that, we can use a subtract. Wire this on up and we want to take the position and uh, the actual position of our points and then our position that we're finding there in the point cloud and we want to subtract them and you can see that this kind of gives the same thing i don't think this matters oops i don't think orientation matters in the subtract or maybe it does i guess it gives you a little bit different there so uh we'll leave the position as the first input and then our position here is the second and we can play around with that and reverse them if we need to but this gives us basically uh, a little bit of a curve going through here that you can kind of see in the vector fields there and we want to calculate uh, the length of that vector and that's going to kind of give us a a mask of where we want the the curl noise to be affected so we'll wire that in and then we use our curl noise or whatever type of noise you want i'm going to use the curl noise if we wire this in let's take our position wire that into position there and then we want to take this length vector that we're creating and we want to wire that into the amplitude. And now if we wire this into our bind, it's kind of hard to see, but in here we have this kind of darker blue that you see. That is where our, our um, curve lies. So we can play around with the roughness of this. If we want, we can make it a little bit more smooth make it a lot more chaotic. Let's kind of drop this. And let's play around with the frequency. So let's maybe up the frequency here. Give us something like that. So we still have the the curve in there. It's just it's kind of being affected a little bit. So we want to just kind of mix these all together, everything that we've done here. So we'll drop down a another mix node. And we're going to wire in our curl noise into the first input and then our output here into the mix. And we can play around with this mix if we want. So if I bring this all the way down, we're gonna get just our curl noise input. If I bring this all the way up, you can see we just get the mix from here. 
So I'm going to just bring this in a little bit because I want to have this affecting quite a bit, but I don't want it to be fully affecting our, we don't want it to just get rid of the vector field outside of our, our curve completely. So that is kind of all you have to do. You can also add another mix node in to to add in some some extra curl noise. So I'll wire this into our input there, and then this into our first input, and we can get some added curl noise into this if we want. We can just leave this kind of low, and this will just kind of add some finer details to our overall shape if you'd like that. So let's take a look at our dop net again, and if I press play, you may have to play around with these settings somewhat, but we get some movement along the curve, but once it goes outside of that curve, you can see that we get the particles moving along inside of this, um, this vector field. So it's not just a straight follow path, it actually has some movement along inside of the um, the vector field once it's once those particles leave the area of effect for the the curve that we created so you can play around with this get some cool effects this looks pretty sweet actually you get a lot of interest very very interesting movement that's going on in here um, and obviously you can play around with all the different settings that you have in here play around with the different mixes the frequency of the noise of the curl noise and everything else in there to to get some uh, different looks to your to your particles. But anyway, so that is the gist of how you go about creating vector fields inside of Houdini and making them kind of follow paths as well as adding that secondary vector field along the outside so that when they leave those paths, they don't just kind of sit there and vibrate a little weird like you see they kind of do here. Uh, and obviously you can add inside of the, the dop nut or the pop nut, you can add some extra extra things in there you can add some forces in there that will continue to make these particles move along once they um, hit these edges if you would like that way they don't just kind of vibrate out there you can make groups and stuff and get some interesting looks with that but anyways like i said this project file is available on patreon if you'd like to grab it on there then go ahead and do that i'm going to go ahead and just make a copy of this and i'll save this project file out and I'll just reset this this one back to what we had before. That way you guys can grab this just this project file if this is the, the first video that you're watching and get this effect as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Check out the project file if you're interested in grabbing that. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.